Now, the federal government has directed the Nigerian mission in Thailand not to evacuate any stranded individual who fails to pay for his accommodation and feeding charges ahead of repatriation. This was contained in a letter to the evacuees signed by the head of Chancery Nigerian mission in Thailand, Nicholas Uhomoibi, and dated May the 14th of 2020. As stated in the letter, the evacuees are to pay 297,000 naira for the accommodation and feeding ahead of their arrival to Nigeria. Nigeria. The government has already evacuated about 253 Nigerians from the United Kingdom and 265 others from Dubai, United Arab Emirates in the past weeks. And joining us in the studio is Biodun Shoumi, who is a social commentator, to discuss this issue. Good afternoon, Mr. Shoumi. Good afternoon. And good to have you here. When you saw that letter, when you read it or heard about it, what's your initial reaction to that? Yeah, my initial reaction is um, this is beyond belief that this can be true. So this is the only country. Shocked? I when I later confirmed that that's the case, I was surprised and shocked that this is the only country that rejects our citizens. Even when they are in difficulty, mm. this is just um, beyond belief. It's um, unheard of. It's better for the federal government not even to do anything than to give conditions to Nigerians who have paid for their tickets mm -hmm. that they must go in, into isolation and then they have to pay for the cost of isolation, including the cost of feeding them. That is absurd, is outrageous, is indefensible. Um, when you look at it, even from moral angle, you'll ask yourself, what happens to the millionaires and billionaires you know, the emirs and all the people, the rich people, the others who had been uh, in one form of um, isolation or the other, you know, under the auspices of the governments, mm. different government, both states and federal in the country, did they pay for it? They didn't. Many of these Nigerians are poor Nigerians. Some of them were already victims of the system there because they didn't, they have not regularized their papers and they want to use this opportunity to come back home because they will not be able to access treatment in those countries. And then the right thing is for them to, to come, home. come back home so that they can access treatment and get support. Many of them were hiding, living in hiding, you know, struggling to find a living in those countries. Yes, there are comfortable Nigerians who genuinely wants to come home. But the fact of the matter is, after they have paid for their fares, why imposing under conditions which are not imposed on Nigerians living in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. No, it's quite strange. I just can't imagine it. You know, I just think government at a point will review the thinking behind it. I don't want to believe what somebody said, that government is seeing this. Um, I, I actually believe that maybe it's joking, but when you really look at it, there may be some truth in it, that because of the fall in export earnings from oil, the government wants to catch in on the evacuees, you know, to make some foreign currency for the country. Well, it's not verified, I, I, so... I, 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 yeah, I actually <laughs> believe it's a joke. No, I actually it's thought so it's joking. I actually thought it's joking, but I sincerely hope that is not what is driving this. Should you be you advising know? the government? What would you say to them to do with these, their own, you know, like you said, uh, instead of... Uh, not taking in their own what i mean how best can the government handle this because it's um i hear what you're saying but again it's also a strange place to be it's a difficult place that where everyone finds you know where we found ourselves so how would you suggest the government would handle this the, the what is quite clear to me is that even if we can't behave to standards and we're going to have to behave below standards mm -hmm. at least some measure of morality should guide it if you're going to have to charge for people to go into isolation, it should be charged across the board. Not only Nigerians coming home, Nigerians living in Nigeria should be charged. And then let government wait for the reaction. We are creating a problem which we may not be able to solve within a short time. The reason is this. Many people will get the wrong message from it. They will refuse to evacuate and come back home. What they will simply do is once the flight lockdown is over, mm -hmm. they will come in through the land borders, which we all know are very, very porous. We have so many of them, and are, they are very, very porous. 
Consequently, those who may have been, if, may have been infected, again, will bring it back into the country. So we'll go back into that cycle. Whatever money government is thinking of saving now, they will end up having to pay for it later because, again, within a short time, we have another blowout of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So my sincere advice is that government should rather understand the financial pressure is going to cost a billion naira, a little over a billion naira, you know, to bring it to, to, to treat them and feed them, you know, for the 4,000 people uh, for 16 days. It's about over a billion naira. But what government needs to consider is the cost of not, you know, treating them, the cost of people sneaking in through the land borders one way or the other, mm. and then reinfecting other Nigerians. So uh, to get the balance right, is it that government will charge across the board so that it seems to be very fair, you know, if you can afford to pay, uh, then you pay. Those who cannot afford to pay, you know, should not have to pay anything because mm -hmm. we have so many people who are struggling, millions struggling to earn a living in the country. So what the government needs to do is to allow, bring all Nigerians who want to come home, come home, and then even though they've paid for their flight, they should not even pay for um, accommodation, accommodation and um, um, feeding because they didn't choose to be in isolation. Mm -hmm. So they cannot but, pay but for the consequences. But that's the right thing to do. You know, they have to be in isolation anyway. Yeah, but they did not choose to be in isolation. There are countries in the world today that people are being evacuated and they are not in isolation. My younger brother came home from UK uh, in the midst of COVID-19. He flew out on the very Monday night when flights, the last day of the flights from Nigeria, when he got to UK, he was in his home the next day because they only did a basic temperature check and that's all. And they allowed, he was allowed to go home. Till now, he has not developed any malaria or any signs of COVID-19. The problem with that is that not everyone will be responsible enough to say, well, even if I don't go into the isolation center, I will stay away from others, you know, just in case. No, the, quest, the problem is this. We are stigmatizing people who have been abroad. Because you live abroad, because you have traveled abroad on one business or the, or the other, you know, that means you have COVID-19. No. Is COVID-19 test compulsory for all Nigerians in Nigeria today? No. How many? We don't even have the capacity to test all the people. When you want to put people in self-isolation, there must be a basis for it. Mm -hmm. And the basis should be because they have a high temperature above 38 degrees, that means they have fever. In that case, you cannot determine whether it's malaria fever or COVID-19. Then they need to go in. All right. You know, you cannot just unilaterally, and the government decides and say, everybody coming back to Nigeria must go into isolation, even though they do not have signs or symptoms of, of COVID-19. COVID I will say thank you so very much, Mr. Shoumi, for it's coming and sharing your thoughts.